Frank Herbert, is it Frank Herbert? Yeah, wrote a guy yeah, wrote wrote a book called The White Plague, uh, which had was not popular, but I thought it was fascinating, and it's about weaponization of a weaponization of the virus, and he put he distributed it on money. Mm. So he made a virus that it, it took, uh, and it, it went through how they would he would compose this virus, make it work. It was brilliant, really, and uh, spread it on money, and then spent the money, and it wow. went all over the place. Because <laughs> I mean, the the scary thing is like, rabies is you. It's hard to catch rabies, but it will fucking kill you absolutely positively. Right. right? I mean, unless you get that shot. Uh, it will kill you, right? So just imagine you could get, you could spread something with the effect, with the transmissibility of measles, the 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 uh, rapidity of the plague, and the certainty of rabies. We'd be gone. Mm. So, but, the, but COVID isn't like that. It's a flu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A flu that can kill you, but you know, I had the one that killed. Uh, I don't tell people this, but I had the one back in uh, was it 95, 96, killed 200 people in Europe, and I had it. Holy shit, I lost 35 pounds. Wow. I had the one that got out of, that they say got out of the lab in the 76 or whatever it was, and I lost 35 pounds. And I had the one in the late 50, in the early 50, 60, and uh, I had to go to the hospital. So uh, I've, I've, I've had enough of these, and they're pretty horrible, but. So you said you look at the actual uh, makeup of COVID, and you're saying it's nothing new. What do you mean, nothing? Uh, like is it, you say it's a flu, it's, it's nothing drastically different from the flu. It's it's uh, it's not. It's just more. Uh, it's more effective, and it's got a cunning adaptation. I mean, we th- don't think of it this way because of. But I mean, bio biological you know, molecules, biomolecules are just little machines. They're they're they're, they're incredibly disorganized. They look disorganized to us, but they do work right uh, through the transformation of charges. And so they're getting organized to do work. And this particular, uh, uh, this particular uh, virus has an interestingly effective method of getting into cells and spreading relatively rapidly and causing all sorts of bad things to happen rather quickly. So, uh, you know, I think this, I think if I got the D, the, what's called the D one, that would probably kill me. Oh, really? The Delta? Because I'm pretty, I mean, I'm pretty beat up already. Mm. What do you think about the likelihood that, that they did create it through the GAN function? Oh, uh, uh, it's very hard. To, it's very hard. I mean, I was, I said originally, there's, there's part, the original data said it looked very unlikely that this would naturally emerge in this sequence. And I'm still in that camp. And the problem you have is that we live in a world where there are specialists, right? And these specialists vary from kindergarten level specialists to the one, the top 0.01% of specialists in the field. The problem is that in, uh, except in rare cases, and we know who these people are, I mean, it's a very small number. People don't do what, you know, they don't, they know their field, but they don't know cross fields. So, you know, the, so you get, you get an awful lot of people who are producing opinions that, but those opinions aren't coming out of the people who have knowledge of, you know, that they've accumulated wisdom. This is a, you know, it's like, I always use economics, but you think it doesn't translate, but it does. But, you know, when we had the 84 crisis, the 83, 84 banking crisis, we lost the state. We've lost all the money that had ever been made in banking. <laughs> Almost overnight, right? Well, the, the problem is by the time we got to 2001, a lot of those guys were out of the market. They, were out, they weren't in the businesses anymore. And secondly, they'd been replaced by computer guys. 
Okay. Now, now, I'm a computer guy. Knows it's one of my core competencies, and I understand that it kind of errors computer guys make. <laughs> it's similar to mathematicians make a certain category of errors. Chemists, chemists don't. I think it's chemistry is a sort of closed discipline. And chemists make are really good at what they do <laughs> because chemistry is really well understood. It's so, but uh, metallurgy is well well understood. I mean, it's another example. Uh, I happen to know quite a bit about metallurgy. So. Uh, but, you know, you're talking about when you get down to the level of viruses, the, the diversity of the means by which a sequence can be injected into a cell and then take it over. I mean, that's really quite complicated. I mean, it, it's simple to say it that way, but the, it's not like there's only two ways of doing it. So... A cell has to be permeable, so there's a ways to violate permeability. And uh, so, what do you think about the life that they created it as a political weapon? Well, I think it was an escape from a gain of function experiment. I mean, I don't understand why anybody would question that. I don't. I mean, it's just too improbable. Every other sol solution is too improbable. <laughs> Sure. You know, they could it could have been as dumb as, you know, the people who went up to that that set of caves, which is quite far away, and brought it back. Uh, you know, it was somehow transmitted by one of the people who was just moving shit. I mean, just transporting cargo. Yeah. Uh, but the uh, and so that's that's likely, but. Uh, there are, this is the part that's open, when you manipulate, a, in other words, the act of uh, viral, uh, of uh, genetic recombination does leave some hints of that. And uh, my, my understanding is those hints are there. Uh, I'd have to, I'd have to find somebody adult to talk to, to be sure that uh, I was be being, that I wasn't making an error in understanding what I, seen sure. but i think it's it's very likely it's a gain of function uh and then very likely it was done there and i think we should operate under that premise if for no other reason to make sure that uh we we have tighter regulation can you tell me what is the purpose of gain of function research well there are two function two purposes of gain of function one is to see if you can make it more uh you can learn about it so that it will become more devastating and so that you know what direction it's going to evolve so that you know how to kill right i mean it's in other words that that's that's an awfully specious <laughs> um, direction of research but it happens the other of course is weaponization and we know that the chinese have no prop the chinese conduct total war they don't have any limit on their warfare they never have they're not limited so we can't to trust them at all to all how we domesticated warfare they're not limited by what we call honorable warfare no and we got to remember we're we're unique there's a certain honor in some in each culture, their concept of honor and war uh, varies, but we're one of the only groups that continued that uh, tradition into modernity. And that's just because we've been at it longer. Mm. All right, so thanks for everything so far. I wanted to talk about my question on Twitter. Um, the, like I said, the propaganda now is that if you is that you're exporting costs onto people if you don't take the vaccine. And so, how would this just and, like, and they're exporting costs onto you by I've, making? And so, uh, because I would, for, I personally think for myself, I don't. I think I would be one of the people who caught if I if I caught COVID, it would be very very minor. And so I feel like for me that the um, the vaccine is a bigger risk because I have seen people that look like me that in my age bracket that have had heart problems um, from yes. it. 
and and I know people who've who spent months working beside people who've had COVID and they've never even gotten it, or if they did, it was nothing. Right. And so, yeah, uh, we again. That's why it's not it. it we can't claim it. it there's no. There's no natural, there's no claim under natural law at all. In other words, there's no scientifically moral claim. But although people other than you and I who hear this, they won't understand what that means. But there's no scientifically moral claim that uh, justifies uh, forcing someone uh, to take the uh, to take this thing um, uh, because it does carry a risk. And so what they're saying is you should accept their opinion of your risk over your opinion of your their risk when there are risks in both ways. And that's just not shown to be true. I'll probably start a clip here and just to communicate your work to people based around the natural law of reciprocity and that being a stable relationship, a, a, a win-win exchange that doesn't export other costs onto other people so that they can cooperate within a society and my question was in i mean you've all, people always say what is what is propertarianism and i wanted to say this for a while like if i want to just give the 25 words or less answer it's a system of law it's a proposed system of law but it's based on science I know. I know that you want to. Go really, no, no. I know. I mean, it's hard. You're going to ask people. So, what is the best way to say is what is what is Aristotelianism? Well, Aristotelianism is, is the is the label, general label we give to the the old ancient world's development of today, what we call empiricism, which is that things have. Uh, uh, realism, naturalism, and empiricism. Realism, natural, the world is real, it exists out there. Things have natural, set, regular, deterministic causes, and um, we, can, we can learn about those through observation. Yeah, right. so... All right, so to hold, hold on. People you've already lost. <laughs> what? So I worry that a lot of people you've already lost. Of course, I mean, but uh, that, you know, it, it's good to tell them what the problem is. Is the problem is, is that 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 empiricism ended up being science, physical science, but physical science didn't solve the problem of social science. So when I say what what propertarian is, is it's the equivalent of the laws of the universe in social science. Yeah, and the laws of win-win human interactions in in yeah. social science in uh, in a society that can be decided by the law is reciprocity. Uh, re reciprocity is those conditions that limit us to productive cooperation and prohibit us from parasitism and predation. Right. So in the in the in the situation now where there are people who are scared about COVID and they want everyone to get the vax, they have the demands. And then someone like me who doesn't want to take it because I feel like the cost benefit analysis is tipped in the other way. We're not in a, in a system of reciprocity. Um, and we said, okay, that the moral decision there would be choice to enable choice. You know, if there's risks either way, then then the moral decision would have to be that it comes down to personal choice. But my question after that, and this is also a, la a larger question that I had that relates to a whole bunch of issues, is if that choice is exporting a cost, to what degree um, under, say, a proprietarian polity, would I still have access to the commons? It, the, 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 so again, why is this a difficult question? The science isn't clear. Yeah, that's right. So in uh, the reason you can't impose it is because it's undecidable. In other words, you can't make the claim either way. You can say, well, I prefer to defensively bias toward immunity at the expense of those people who get fucked over by the negative consequences of this 
uh, shot. And I, you, the other was, is I prefer to bear the cost of my own risk to COVID by, by uh, over the risk that something very serious might happen. So you make that's the rational choice. Can the uh, can the unvaccinated transmit this disease? Well, if you're vaccinated against it, well, so can unvaccinated people carry it. You don't have to be. You could be a carrier, right? Even if you're vaccinated. So I so it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me uh, that yeah. I mean, the the only answer is is even if you get vax, even if everybody's vaccinated, you're not going to make this thing go away. Okay. Because it's just going to change and mutate and carry on. It's the flu. Okay. So, well, that that cuts that whole question off at the beginning. Then, so. The idea that it's a, a pandemic of the unvaccinated and I'm exporting some cost onto people by not taking it, um, as opposed to if you're I took exporting it. a cycle, you're exporting a psychological cost. No, yeah. no, this is how they do it because that's how the world they live in, right? Yeah. They live in a world where you know the neurotic and the uh, empathic. They live in a world where psychological costs are real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to trans, it'd be the equivalent of you, you or me being annoyed. Just to translate, oh, yeah. they feel like I'm exporting a cost, and so I am, <laughs> because their reality is constructed. instructed. Correct. Okay. Whereas realistically, they're exporting a cost onto you, because for you, who's healthy and fit, and if we look at the data, if you're healthy and fit, it's good. You're going to be a relatively high statistical outlier for this. I mean, we know who gets this disease and, and suffers under it, right? So that's so, the question then. And sure, you're going to have... Oh, you just dropped out. So, but if so, we... I mean, it's a call, you're pretty... The problem is it's, un, it's an undecidable proposition without sufficient knowledge. Therefore, you have two choices. You either act immorally against one group or the other, or you leave it up to choice and people pay the costs. Well, I mean, that's all there is to it. So the, the problem with any of these things is we're not talking about science. In other words, we're not talking about science, evidence, testifiability, warrantability, liability, and restitutability, right? The problem with this thing is, if they give you something, you end up like, what's that girl that her nervous system broke down, right? Uh, uh, you know, you end up like that. Well, you know, they can't insure you against that. Yeah. But you can insure yourself against people who have COVID because you can conduct the discipline. So you can insure yourself at the level you're capable of insuring. <laughs> Yeah. That's just all there is. Whereas they, what they're saying is they are not capable of insuring themselves against others. And that's because they lack the agency. So again, great. And you need to get the vaccine so that you don't have to worry about it and you need to stay current on vaccines. And those people who want to avoid vaccines, that's fine. 